Great. Good afternoon. Thank you, Director Alexander Scott. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to first uh, start off by wishing everyone a happy new year. I'm excited to be here today and to report that things are going well with our vaccination campaign. We've crossed the 30,000 doses mark. As Dr. Alexander Scott mentioned, as of 9 a.m. this morning, 31,541 doses have been administered and 1,798 people were fully immunized meaning that they received their second and final dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. I really wanna thank all the folks on the team across state government involved um, who've been working day and night on this effort for the last several weeks. A vaccination effort of this size is enormous um, and requires a tremendous effort of thought and planning and coordination. So thank you to everyone involved. There are many logistical steps along the way. Uh, this includes vaccine allocation planning, ordering, receiving, redistribution, enrollment, and vaccine storage, including the maintaining the temperatures required with these vaccines, which can be complex. We know that the Pfizer vaccine specifically has to be stored in deep freezers. And all this has to happen for a vaccine um, in order to get into someone's arm. All this takes time. I'm gonna outline in more detail shortly how this happens. But the systems we have in place in Rhode Island are working. And I think what's been really impressive here in Rhode Island is that we have one of the highest rates um, in the country for doses administered per capita. We're in the top 10 nationally for doses administered per 100,000 residents. And this is really a testament to the people working on uh, 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 vaccinating on the front line. That being said, like many of you know, we wish there was more vaccine available to people in Rhode Island right now. We're, we're, we're efficiently distributing uh, what's been given to us by the federal government uh, and we're limited by the doses that we're getting uh, nationally. Currently though, we are getting enough vaccine to vaccinate roughly 1.5% of the entire population of Rhode Island a week. It's not a lot, but it's definitely some and we're getting there. We are hopeful that the supply will open up soon and there's some evidence that this may happen in the near future and that states like Rhode Island will start receiving more vaccine each week. And this is really the reality that what we're dealing with at this point. The vaccine that we are getting is being administered to people who are in the highest risk settings and the highest risk occupations. I wanna take a moment to give you a little more detail on who that specifically entails within those categories that we've been vaccinating. If possible, could uh, the first slide uh, be put up for the phase one population? As you can see, we have started to vaccinate in the top three tiers of phase one. As we uh, talked a little bit about last week, there's gonna be some overlap between these tiers in phase one. We have not finished vaccinating everyone in the top tier of phase one. However, we have started to vaccinate some of the other groups, which is good news. I also wanna give you a little more detail on who has been getting vaccinated this week and who we envision is gonna be vaccinated next week uh, and after. If we could put up the slide, please, for the week of January 4th. This week, there's been a lot of vaccinating that's been happening at hospitals, in Central Falls, in health centers, and in nursing homes throughout the state. Additionally, there are five vaccine clinics operating throughout the state. These clinics are not for everyone. They were organized for specific people in high-risk professions. The people uh, being vaccinated at these clinics include EMS professionals, home health and hospice workers, school nurse teachers, first responders such as police officers and firefighters, and urgent care staff. Other people who were vaccinated at other sites this week included medical staff and high-risk inmates at the ACI, respiratory clinic staff, and laboratory staff at the state health uh, laboratories. We know that laboratory workers specifically are at high risk of COVID-19, and we've definitely seen transmission in those settings. For the week of January 11th, as you can see on this next slide, we're gonna continue to vaccinate many of these same populations. The changes uh, for next week are that vaccinating will start happening for additional laboratories doing COVID-19 testing, for college health services staff, and the Wyatt Detention uh, Center staff at that facility. If we could put the overall phase one slide again, I will uh, make a couple comments about our thinking for subsequent weeks here. The next group that we are looking uh, in terms of, of vaccinating in this fourth tier uh, in phase one, this includes healthcare providers and outpatient settings specifically, along with some other people. 
I wanted to acknowledge that we've received a lot of questions from healthcare workers and outpatient clinics. And I really want to say that you are not forgotten. We hear you. Some of you have been vaccinated already, and we are working on actively vaccinating others. We also expect to be able to update outpatient providers on Monday, other outpatient providers, on the earliest date that you can receive uh, vaccination. We anticipate that outpatient providers will be able to sign up to be vaccinated by the end of January. We are going to uh, initiate all the groups in the fourth tier before we move on to the next tier, which is adults older than 75 years of age. So we know from this pandemic that adults who are 75 years of age and older are one of the highest risk of developing severe COVID-19. So they will be prioritized next. We are still working through all the options for vaccinating people specifically for this age group, 75 years of age and older. In the early stages, this may include clinics, it may include bringing vaccine into specific settings, or the use of pharmacies, all of which we're exploring and very, uh, at various steps of implementation. Before passing back to Dr. Alexander Scott, I do want to take another moment or two to give people a little more background on the process and the timing involved in vaccine administration. When vaccine comes into Rhode Island, we want that vaccine administered quickly, efficiently, and safely. And I can't overestimate or overemphasize the complex logistics of this process. Part of ensuring the safe administration of vaccine is scheduling so that it gets to be administered to everyone over the course of several days. And why is that important? So for example, on Mondays, we are getting shipments of roughly 6,500 doses of the Moderna vaccine. It would not be safe, obviously, for us to bring 6,500 people together all in one place, all at one time to be vaccinated. The whole point of the vaccination ca campaign is to prevent the spread of disease and obviously bringing everyone together, uh, as we know, facilitates the transmission of this virus. So vaccine is being redistributed to a variety of sites, which takes time and logistics. And then once at these sites, people are being rescheduled, are being scheduled to get vaccine over the course of several days. Another thing to consider is that a lot of the vaccination right now is happening at employer-based uh, settings and healthcare settings. So these healthcare organizations, such as hospitals, uh, can't vaccinate entire hospital units at once. So like most vaccines, COVID-19 causes people to experience mild to moderate reactions. This is something uh, we know that we've talked about, such as headache, slight fever, body aches, et cetera. For that reason, a hospital, for example, has to schedule vac vaccination of a given unit over the course of a few days so that they can ensure that the workforce um, is all being out on sick, uh, on sick time. I'm providing this background and context so people understand that the vaccine is not administered the moment it arrives in Rhode Island or in any state for that matter. It's administered over the course of a few days or a week. And this is normal, this is part of our plan, and this is how the vaccine uh, has been implemented. Trust me, I understand that everyone, we understand the Department of Health, everyone here understands how eager everyone is to get vaccinated. And that's great, and we're excited about that. But trust me, we want people to get vaccinated um, as soon as possible. But the logistics of this large uh, vaccination effort, something that we really haven't, none of, our, none of the states uh, in the country um, have done before, is going to take some time. And so we're again asking for people to be patient just a little bit longer. This is going to roll out over a course of months. Uh, it is not going to be days or weeks. It's going to take months to get this vaccine out uh, to everyone in the state. Before I end, I just want to make one final point. Misinformation has been a, had a significant impact on the health and well-being of both our communities and the people, uh, people's personal health. And we're hearing reports, we're starting to get reports and have been getting reports from across the country, including here in Rhode Island, of simply inaccurate and false information uh, related to vaccines and other aspects of COVID-19. And in terms of health-related information on topics such as vaccines, but also other health-related topics, I do want to, again, encourage people to seek out information from reliable sources, like your primary care provider, and not from social media or other sources that can really be questionable. I want to, again, reiterate to people that myself, along with my other uh, physician colleagues, nurse practitioners, healthcare professionals, um, have taken an oath to keep people healthy. Literally, our job is your health. And we base our actions and advice on science and evidence. And the Rhode Island Department of Health will continue to provide recommendations and guidance based on the latest science and evidence, as we've done uh, since the beginning, to help us get us through the pandemic. 
So I do want to thank everyone again for your patience and continued perseverance. We're getting there during this process. I again want to acknowledge my healthcare worker colleagues, especially on the front lines, working day and night to address this pandemic.